What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back with another video. Today we are going to talk about the Y word. Um, yeah, Non-controversial topic. Yeah, very yeah. non-controversial topic. Obviously being two Jewish Tottenham fans, then um, I think we've got a lot of opinions on it. So Yeah, we've never actually done a separate video on, the, on this topic. Obviously there's, there was a survey that came out a few months ago when Tottenham surveyed their fans on the Y word and there was all um, a huff about that when, it, when that came out. Um, and obviously yeah. you see us on match day vlogs we're clearly not shy about saying the word um, but I think it's all flared up again after the Oxford English it's, Dictionary it's, it always comes back again always always oh, it never dies down does it well, and you know, David Badil has been very vocal yet of again he is, of course he has um, but yeah the Oxford English Dictionary has added the definition of Yid um, they've expanded it to also mean in officially in the in the dictionary it now also means um, a supporter of or player for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, so that is that. That's what causes a lot of news headlines a couple of days ago. I, for one, absolutely love that. Yeah. I do. I absolutely love it. I, I don't. I, I don't see what people can really have an issue with in terms of they. Uh, they they've obviously come up under a lot of criticism, saying that they have uh, that they shouldn't be putting that, and it gives people a license to use the word inappropriately and stuff like that. However. Oxford, the uh, Oxford English Dictionary, they responded saying that they they reflect rather than dictate the use of the language. So all they're doing is reflecting how the language is used uh, in this modern day and age. And they're not saying this is how it should be used or it's appropriate. They're just they're just seeing and what's out there in practice how it is actually and used. used. And that's how it's used in this day yeah. and age a lot a lot uh, very commonly so. And I think that I think it was the right move for them to uh, to add that to the dictionary. And I think. People obviously aren't happy about it, uh, but but that that's just the unhappy reality. Yes, that's the that's that's what's going on at the moment because that's how it is being used. There's an argument uh, that a lot of people say that are anti the word. They say that um, that if we don't call ourselves the Yids, then then rival fans will not be discriminating us in that way, and they won't be calling us calling us those words it's not that I don't think that's the argument the argument is that it encourages our rival fans yeah. just to use the word yeah. Yeah. Um, more than more more than they would but I, th I think obviously I think that's a ridiculous argument it's an absolutely ridiculous argument because the only reason that we started using it is because other fans started using it against us we adopted it to bring people like us Jewish fans in and make us as one fan base you know what I mean it's like um, like an I am Spartacus moment, mm -hmm. like from the movie Spy. Everyone says I am Spartacus, I am Spartacus. It's the same thing. I'm a yid, I'm a yid. That is exactly what it is to put it in a bit of context. For people that don't really understand, because a lot of people that argue against the word don't really understand the context of what it's used, and they don't understand they just uh, think the reasoning of why it's been used. A lot of people, I think, just think we've adopted uh, Spurs fans adopted it just because they have a lot of Jewish fans, and so oh, we're the Ids now, because, and so we get to claim that word because of, because of our Jewish fan base. No, it's not like that. They're rival fans used to when we used to go away to grounds back in the 80s, 70s, and 80s, um, especially at, like Chelsea and West Ham. I'm sure there's probably various other grounds as well. Yeah. Um, they rival fans used to um, direct anti-Semitic abuse towards our fan base because we were known for having a lot of Jewish supporters. Mm -hmm. They used to say, "Oh, yids, yids." They used to say a bunch, a lot of obviously horrible chants as well yeah. with that gas chains and all these things. And they and they used to direct that that kind of abuse directly at our fan base. And instead of us kind of just casting aside the Jewish support, we could have easily uh, what, uh, distanced ourselves. The fan base could have distanced themselves from the Jewish fans and say, look, we're not Yids, they're, they're the Jews, they're that. No, they didn't say that. They, they supported the, their, their fellow Jewish fans and they actually stood up with them and said, if he's a Yid, then I'm a Yid as well. And if you come after our, one of us, you come after all of us. And that's the origin of how Tottenham started using, the, um, using Yid in all their chants. And, mm -hmm. and maybe in this day and age, I think, um, I think obviously the anti-Semitic abuse was more prevalent back in the 70s and 80s than it is nowadays, but it is still there. And, and it is still a part of, a, you know, there was a video of Chelsea fans in Lille not so long ago doing gas chamber songs and stuff like that. So it's still not completely I, uncommon. I, I've been on trains, I remember it so clearly, 2008, on the way to the Carling Cup final against Chelsea. I was on my own, I was coming to meet you at the station. All I heard around me was Chelsea singing that uh, Hitler's gonna gas him again song. That's literally all I heard around me. Um, those those chants don't come about because we call ourselves the Ids. 
And they're not going to stop using the anti-Semitic slurs and anti-Semitic songs if we stop calling ourselves the Yids. It's just not, not going to happen. In fact, they'll probably see it as a victory if exactly. they get that word banned. Exactly. Uh, it'll be probably the opposite effect. Um, and uh, you know, all, for, all, for all these years of the d anti Semitic abuse being directed at Spurs fans, you don't see any news articles of old oh, Chelsea saying, saying this at Tottenham today or any, anything like that. It's like, it, it was, it, it's like the, the news don't report on it so much. And it's, it's quite disheartening in, when, you, when you think of it like that. I know maybe in this day and age, you've got, you got Dan Levine from um, Chelsea um, on Twitter, he rails rails against. Um, the Chelsea um, exactly. racist chant. Exactly. Second minute in, we've had a racist chant. Third minute in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so he, he's kind of very hyper into that. But you like you know the second a Spurs, um, a Spurs um, fan was accused of racism was all over the news, but you never hear like when when the anti-Semitic abuse against Spurs fans um, from from rival fans, you hardly ever hear of it uh, in the news. I just find it so ridiculous to hear that people say that that Tottenham fans incite anti-semitic hatred or anti-semitic abuse uh, because we use the y word or we use the word yid i'm not even going to censor it because i don't feel it no, needs we, to be we censored we haven't censored it at all on this channel um, so, we so i just find it completely ridiculous and and the people like david Bedil needs to to look closer at his own fan base than uh, than pointing the finger at us what do you think of the i'll read the tottenham statement they made a statement on the oxford english dictionary thing they said, as a club, we have never accommodated the use of the Y word on any club channels or in club stores and have always um, been clear that our fans, both Jewish and Gentile, have never used the term with any intent to cause offence. We find that the Oxford English Dictionary's definition of the word misleading, given it fails to dis distinguish context and welcome their clarification. Um, the English Dictionary actually responded saying, um, that it was bound to reflect rather than dictate how language is used. I so that is, so that they defended. Um, to be honest, with what Tottenham have said, I I agree with it. Um, I don't. They need to be politically correct in whatever they bring out Tottenham. Of course. And they had to they had to respond in some sort of way to this. Um, obviously, the Yid thing is is mainly to do with the fans. It's not to do with the hierarchies of the club of and on the message they put out and stuff like that. So really, the term Yid. Yeah, we use it as a fan base, but it, they don't really know what it's all about because it's it's us as the fans that have felt uh, what's on the terraces. They don't feel what's on the terraces, really. Right, cause they're, but they're above all that. They just they they they're planning on running a football club. They're not in tune so much with how what the fan base is uh, thinking of. I know they they probably take censuses and stuff, and they point to all these um, that survey they did, where I don't think there are a lot of people point to that survey as evidence that the Tottenham fans. Um, mindsets are changing on the word but i didn't see that in in, mm. in, in that survey um but they I th obviously they had to say that but i think the, what they said at the end there is it's the word is um the, the definition of the word is misleading given it fails to distinguish context i think that is kind of right just context is key like you've mentioned yeah. so many times it's all about context context is is, is the most important thing and i think for the oxford, oxford english dictionary just to say yid means tottenham or tottenham player or, or supporter um, I can see why Tottenham are saying it's misleading because it doesn't it, it doesn't just it doesn't add into the fact why it's um, used as that because then obviously um, rival fans could turn around and say oh I'm saying Yid and uh, it just means Tottenham players so it's fine but but it also said in the dictionary that um, about a Jew it didn't just right. say about Tottenham so it, of course, it has it a couple expanded of the, it expanded yeah, the definition yeah. and that's true the de words can have more than one meaning and that's exactly what they're they're showing here but what do you think of the argument that um do you think rival fans should should be banned from saying the word is it, is it, is it like you say context is everything if they're talking about that word and talking about hitler's gonna gas them again and, and talking about that kind of stuff yes 100 percent be banned in that context but like you made the point on talk sport chelsea have a song about alvaro morata saying he hates the yids that's just him, them saying he hates Tottenham. It's just the same as us saying um, Aurier hates Chelsea. I don't yeah. have a problem with that at all. Yeah, but it, obviously people would argue that... Um, it's the way people read it. Yeah, I guess. So people would argue that word should be banned and any utterance of the word uh, shouldn't be allowed at football grounds. I think at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to a political issue in terms of how far free speech should go. It's actually a free speech issue if you think yeah. about it. Yeah. Because it comes down to, do you think certain words should be banned or do you think we should be allowed to... Um, 
people should be allowed to express themselves freely and then the the consequences come from public intera social interactions as opposed to the government punishing you on certain things because the government deems certain things racist should um, you know it's, it's of, of your opinion if the government should step in and ban certain speech uh, I'm kind of, of of the opinion that they shouldn't um, overall, I, I don't believe in the government banning offensive words, and, and even even if they are going to cause offence, I think it's too subjective for the, the the government to be stepping in and saying you're going to get fined for, for saying that word, and you're going to get fined for saying that word, and and I think also, I, I just think it's it's a dangerous. Uh, I don't like the how the government do that in this country, and I I, I know it's a very political issue when it when it comes down to that, but I think that is the core of this because when people complain about it, it's about they always say, oh, other people shouldn't be allowed to use it. Well, what if you encourage other people to use it? Well, that's the price you pay for freedom. That's the price you pay for free speech. Other people have the, in my opinion, have you have the right to offend and you, uh, and you, you don't have the, the right to stop people being off offending you, really. In, uh, otherwise, it, it is a slippery slope. In terms of, of, of Tottenham and the Yid thing, it's literally non-Jewish Spurs fans and Jewish Spurs fans coming as one, showing solidarity think, together yeah. and backing each other up. I think, that's any, what it is. I think the criticism of Spurs fans in general of reclaiming the word and saying they don't have a right to is just misleading. I think it's not directed in the right place because it's not the, you're not targeting the right people uh, in, for criticism here. You should be targeting the people who Spurs are reacting to, not Spurs themselves. Spurs are actually standing in solidarity with their fellow Jewish fans and to attack them for it and saying that's anti-Semitic is quite frankly ridiculous in yeah. my opinion. Um, but, I can, but then people say that it gives people a license to say it, that's the problem. Um, but they've been saying it anyway, it's not like it's, stopped, we, we've, it's been stopped anyway. I just think for some, I don't know why the focus is on Tottenham because we are actually taking a stand against anti-Semitism against our, our Jewish fans. That it's, it's puzzling to me that they would rather look at that than look at the other the, the fan bases who actually direct anti-Semitic abuse against Tottenham. They would yeah. rather try and top stop Tottenham from defending their Jewish fans, um, which which is quite annoying, um, and I feel a bit disingenuous as well sometimes. Like, and yeah, I mean it's 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 it's, a, it's not. A, I think it is. It's not. A, completely a black and white situation no definitely not but I think both sides do have valid arguments that's the thing uh, because you know you look at the side against what we're we're trying to say you know look at that Watford fan that called up like talk sport last yeah. night just after you were on he is genuinely offended by that word and he is a Jewish Watford fan uh, and I'm sure you've got fans of Arsenal Chelsea even Spurs who are actually genuinely offended by that word so which way do you go I mean, as I, as I said before, it comes down to a political issue. Do people have the right to be offended and, and, and do people have the right to demand certain words be uh, banned and censored? I say no, some people say yes, and, that, and that's, the, that's it. Like, uh, uh, and, you know, if someone asked me, how would you feel if someone called me a yid outside of a football context? Um, and, as a, and would I be offended by it? Uh, I mean, me personally, I've never actually had it directed at me. So maybe I'm just coddled. Maybe I, maybe I'm just in my bubble that I, I, I haven't. I've never been. I've never suffered from it. I've never uh, had it directed to me in a derogatory way. So I don't know how I'd feel. I'm <laughs> assuming it maybe it won't feel great. But I, I think you know. I think the old adage, "Sticks and stones will break your bones, but words can never hurt you." That that's what we used to teach our kids back when we were younger. And it's, we seem to have lost that. Yeah. We've seen that's completely. It seems to have completely gone out the window. And people just want to be offended by things. Yeah. People people look yeah. to it. Look to be offended by things. People kind of. It's, it's weird this Jewish fan base like the, 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 um, the Jews in this country like they want it to be an offensive word they want it to be banned they want um, it's like if, if, the, if the definition changes over time to meaning Tottenham fan or supporter surely that'd be a good thing you would think surely that would, that would be a, something that um, would take the negative connotation away from the word and you all of a sudden get a situation where maybe in 50 years time it only represents Tottenham uh, supporters and, and no one even remembers there was a neg ne negative connotation. That would be a good thing. Why? The, the, it's a good thing if the word is reclaimed because you don't want people being offended by the word and bring all those negative connotations. I just think it, it, when, when, when people are standing up for uh, people who are being, for minorities that are being abused and then you're saying they're the part of the problem, that's an issue for me. And I, and I don't like that at all. 
But it's um, obviously I'd love to know your opinions. Um, obviously, given that you most of your Spurs fans, you're probably going to be on our side. But I'd like to know if you disagree. If you disagree, please let us know. We're happy to have that conversation. We're happy to have you on and debate this issue. I think we're more than open to having our minds altered and changed and more evidence coming to light. And obviously, we're open to all other opinions. But I just, that, that's just how we, I see it at the moment. Yeah, conversation is the key and we're happy to have a conversation with anyone about any matter revolving Tottenham or football or so. Anyway, um, put in the comment section below what you think of this matter. Do you think the Y word or the word Yid is still okay to say at football or do you think it should be stamped out? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on Spurs. Spurs.